It is that time again. We are moving out on to one last side trip before we're full time again. All right, you're good. We're headed off to Tucson this time and we have been to Tucson a couple of times, but we have never been to Mount Lemmon and I'm so excited to go because it's like 100 degrees down in the valley and tonight it's gonna be like 35 degrees at Mount Lemmon and we are gonna go check out the universe at Sky Center on top of Mount Lemmon. It's a University of Arizona program and we are doing a private tour and we're gonna get to look through their telescope and learn about the stars and the planets and all of that tonight. And I am super stoked. This has been planned for a while. The kids are pretty excited about staying at the KOA, Lazy Days KOA in Tucson. And uh, we're not gonna boondock because as I said, 100 degree temperatures, no thanks. But it's a nice park. We're the Farnsworths. For the last four years, we've been traveling full time in our RV as we take travel nurse contracts across the country. In February of 2022, we bought a home base in Phoenix, Arizona that we plan to rent as we continue traveling. We'll be back on the road full time soon, but in the meantime, we're playing weekenders and taking side trips in our new home state. Does it feel funny to be packing winter coats and hand warmers and gloves and hats when it's, you know, like in the 90s down here? Yes. It absolutely feels weird. Our kids complaining because they're so hot wearing pants. Yes, they are complaining. They're complaining about everything. But it's okay, it's normal. We're gonna go see the literal universe tonight. Like up close, not at a planetarium, the actual stars and planets and moon. So we just gotta get there. As we settled in, it was time to head up towards Mount Lemmon to the Sky Observatory. And let me tell you, the drive was an event in and of itself. It is amazing how much the landscape changes in 9,150 some odd feet of elevation chains. And it is so nice to get away from the Tucson heat. It is beautiful along the Catalina Highway. Yes, also called the Sky, Sky Island Byway. Sky Island Byway. And they call it that because it is just such a profound change in just the geography and the look of everything, the boulders, the cliffs, all of it is just absolutely stunning. Yeah, even if you're not going to the observatory, you should go take that just drive. Just take the drive, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. not be cold and the letter you get an email confirmation and I think it probably stated three or four times make sure you bundle up bring more clothes than you think you're gonna need like second from the last yeah we're line. second from the last there's a line there's a line and you have to be let in this gate so if you're late that's it so we got there and the first thing that we did was they took us up to where a bunch of the different domes were and we got a nice introduction to what is on top of uh, Mount Lemmon there and also the fact that there are all kinds of telescopes surrounding the Tucson area because it is such a fantastic place to view the night sky. They have laws in Tucson to reduce the light pollution in the air. Right there on the road is the tallest per place in Tucson. So if you want to be the tallest person in Tucson, there you go. Wow. <laughs> I know, it's super amazing. 
Well, my name is Travis. This is Tracy. We'll be your program presenters, telescope operators, drivers, cooks, cashiers, basically everything. Now you can see that we have a bunch of telescopes up here, and that's because this area of the country is absolutely fantastic for astronomy. And so pretty much every mountain peak within this area has telescopes on top of it. They kind of told us really quickly what all the different telescopes do. They have different uses and purposes, and so and they're operated by different people in even different countries. There's a, tel there's a telescope that watches for space trash. There's a telescope that watches for uh, meteoroids. And there's one that looks for other planets. So the Phillips and the Shulman. These are the largest telescopes that we know of that the public can have an eyepiece on and look through. Um, there aren't any bigger ones. If you find them, you have to let us know. It was in that waiver you signed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but all the rest of them are going to have um, instruments on the back, cameras, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So not an eyepiece that humans could look through. But you can tour other observatories. Kitt Peak is still shut down, unfortunately, due to COVID, but they are slowly lifting the restrictions. Mount Graham, they offer daytime tours through the telescopes over there, not nighttime. And nestled down in the valley is a 20-inch telescope at Discovery Park that they'll have open as well. Flagstaff also has some nighttime tours. I don't know where their restrictions are right now. Mm -hmm. And then I believe there's a day tours at some point that were for Mount Hopkins. With that, <laughs> let's go inside of our telescope dome. <laughs> The next part was to take us inside the Shulman Telescope and it was amazing. We got to see the dome open up, we got to see the inside and they did it while it was still a little bit daylight for us so we could learn how to like adjust the eyepiece and the focusing and see a little bit more and learn where the warming hut was which was important because it did get cool there enough to wear winter coats because remember you're at 9,000 plus feet elevation. So having all of that it was, was really neat to see before it got dark. So these are some of the eyepieces that we're going to be using. And I want to make sure you know how to use them so that later on tonight when it's pitch black in here, you're trying to look through the telescope, you don't look through the eyepiece like this. <laughs> because this is incorrect. So the light that we are looking at has been traveling through space at the speed of light for about 8.7 years. Constantly tracking that object, meaning it's countering the Earth's rotation opposite direction equals speed. Sweet! <laughs> Sweet! Let's go see a flaming ball. We went back outside and we got to look at the brightest star we've ever seen and That's you've right. all seen the sun <laughs> the sun it was really neat we had the little solar view things that we ended up picking up later for the kids yeah that kind of you, you guys probably remember some of the solar eclipses right the little viewers that you can look through to see the sun but it was really neat because we got to do something else too yeah there were two telescopes there and you could look directly at the sun through these telescopes and see the rays like see the what is it called solar fl the like flares, the flares the coming solar, off the yeah. solar flares coming off of the sun i have never seen the sun that close up with my own eyes the sun is not yellow or orange or red it is a white kind of star it's almost like our human eye evolved to see the sun as that a white crazy. balanced object because they did <laughs> so this one is seeing all the colors equally and it's just a white image that you can see the sunspots with this one is looking only at the hydrogen gas, which allows you to see prominences. You see a light? Whoa. So those are those storms coming up. There's a magnetic field, just like a bar magnet. Oh, wow. It's really cool. Just watching the prominences so come off of them. Oh, yeah. When we were looking at it, the the flares that were coming off of the sun, they had already happened seven minutes prior. That's how long it takes 
us to be traveling able to see, at light speed yes to be able to see the flares on the sun after that we got to go back into a community area where we watched a really short film that was all about programs at the university of arizona and astronomy and things about the milky way and you know solar flares and supernovas and all these cool things including the moon that we were going to get a chance to see everyone got a set of binoculars yep, that's because right we were going to go back out and look at some stuff before it got dark and we were served dinner it was just <laughs> Dinner. Dinner. It was a sack lunch of, you know, sandwiches and chips, but uh, we were not there for the food. No. Binoculars were for oh, yeah. checking out the other telescopes that were in the area, and then also we were looking at the sun because the, there was this cool thing that happens at sunset that you don't normally see, and the sky actually turns green right as the sun goes down. So we were able to use the binoculars. You don't stare at the sun, but you can <laughs> stare right off to the side of the sun and you can see the, the sky very briefly turn a lot green. Of, a lot of people see and notice it. It's the green flash that the sun gives off. And you've probably seen or heard about that at the beach, which is another place where you can see it because the horizon is so level. Mm -hmm. But if you get the right type of elevation, like we had where you're looking over a far distance where it's more of a valley, so you're up high and looking down, you can often see it. It was really it easy was, to see that green really flash. Cool. It was really cool. Yes. Just, it's one awesome thing after another. So after that, we went back up and we were able to look at the big telescope, which is the 60 inch Cassegrain telescope. Cassegrain telescope, which is always monitored by somebody there, and its sole purpose is to look for um, near Earth collision asteroids or objects and anything that is potentially coming into our orbit orbit which you would think that you know we've made a lot of movies about stuff like this and you would think this is a rare occurrence but the amazing thing that we learned is they discover new space objects every single night every, every night. single night they discover new stuff and what the record was like 90 ni yeah 90. 90 objects in one night that they recorded yep and then in, in the neat night previous that we had been there that she thought that they had what like 40 something new yeah. ones so anywhere from like 10 to 90 a night they say so every single night it, this dome is kind of like a humble abode it is not fancy inside other no, than the telescope no. the telescope is very cool mm -hmm. but the actual like living quarters of where the scientists work because remember this is a working research facility and so we had to be like quiet and keep our lights off and everything mm -hmm. because there are people there that are actually working yeah on they're this. doing their jobs they're doing their jobs 10 percent of all detectives asteroids and 46% of all of detected asteroids that could potentially harm the earth right there. 46% <laughs> yep. from this from this one telescope in Tucson. That was maybe one of my favorite parts of all of this, is this was not Disneyland, you know? There was no commercialism whatsoever with this. So, I mean, it was, but it was it was working. Like, th these people were working, they showed us where they live while they were there, all, all that kind of stuff. This was truly a working environment that we just happened to walk through. So it felt so much more real life than some of the other opportunities that are there. Now, looking through the telescopes is amazing anyway, but that, and seeing them actually do the science and learning about it was what made it really neat for me. Yeah. So you can see even right now there's quite a few yeah. um, and these are just ones that were discovered in the last few nights that are in need of follow-up right Ooh. now. This is local time and this is universal time. Oh. Um, so a lot of things that we're reporting on we're using universal time instead of local time because we're also talking to obs observatories around the world. After that, we went back to the community room again for another quick break and to talk some more and then put the hand warmers to good use because it got into the 30s, so it did get cold. Okay, we're not gonna be able to video once we get inside the dome because it's gonna be pitch black and we can't use any lights, which means the lights and on my camera. Need to sign their so we're gonna use these. And they gave us these little tiny keychain red lights and they even went so far as to tape Chloe's <laughs> shoes on her light on the sides of her shoes light up when she stomps you know those kids shoes so they t they take those down we ended up having to like take them off because yeah. she thought it was hilarious so she'd stomp you know it was so awe-inspiring we were a little bummed because we, they told us we wouldn't be able to see planets because just a, a way the way things were aligned at the time that we visited we weren't able to see planets however there was a supernova yeah which was just incredible because it was 53 million light years away from us and we could see it 
through a telescope. But he said we would probably be a small group of maybe about a thousand people on the entire planet that would have seen it with our own eyes through a telescope. There is something magical about being able to look through the eyepiece and, yes. and look at what, what is actually going on out I there. I mean, my mind is still blown. I'm getting all teary. I'm just thinking about <laughs> the fact that we could see that far yeah. away. The moon, crispness of the yeah. picture. And I don't know if it was the brightness, because it was so bright when you looked into the telescope, or just the incredible awe of knowing, like, I am looking with my own eyes at the surface of the moon. Yeah. I don't know, but I was like all teary eyed and like totally caught up <laughs> Kristen in the moment. Felt real. She got real into it. I was so overwhelmed at just how small, like, have you ever experienced something where you just feel so small, but like in a good way and just completely overcome with all that's how I felt. Yeah, because it was so bright and they weren't worried about night vision anymore, that's when you could take pictures. Yeah. You're glowing in the dark. Glowing in the dark, I feel it in my heart. You're glowing in the dark, glowing in the dark, yeah, you're glowing in the dark. You can make it go away, glowing in the dark. Travis was so great with our kids. He let them like type in the coordinates mm -hmm. for the next star that we were gonna look at and like Hit the button. Hit the button, which that would moved turn the, the telescope dome and everything. And turns the dome, and yeah. they thought it was so amazing. So now put 42. Okay. All right. Now this is the most complicated part. I need you to take the mouse and I need you to click go to. Congratulations, you're now in a star. Yay! They had it timed, and they were like, "All right, we need to go outside. Bring your binoculars." So we went outside. And the space station yeah, was flying. Yeah, ISS was flying over was us. Was flying over us. It was, I mean, you're looking at the binoculars and you're just like, wow, there it goes. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's it super fast. It was really cool. I will never, ever forget it. This will be one of the most memorable points of our trip. Yep. Like, of our full timing of adventure total. Our full total. timing, I think. One of the things I just kept thinking about is what would it have been like if I had been given these opportunities as a kid? I love my life. I wouldn't change anything. I had a great childhood, but I had no idea these kinds of jobs were real. They seemed like fairy tales to me. I wanted to be a lot of things as a kid, an anthropologist, a meteorologist, the researching kind, not the broadcast kind. But ultimately, I settled on business because it was the practical thing to do. What if I had seen that real people make good livings doing what they actually love? Getting to tour an operating research facility that's responsible for discovering so many things was mind-blowing. To have such an important job that no one knows about as they safely sleep in their homes around the world. This experience has fueled our desire to continue exposing our kids to a wide variety of opportunities until we find the things that light them up as bright as that moon. It was really cool. <laughs> it was just uh, such a cool, it was such a fun trip. We had so much, we learned. And this was yeah. like a learning trip for it sure. It was, for sure. But it was good. Yeah, and then after that, after that, we finally get to take you full time on the road with us. We're gonna do a Phoenix wrap up yep. and then um, we'll be off, so. We only have like a couple of days here left at the uh, NOP Oasis, yes. so. And if you're an NOP, make sure that you check your emails. Uh, tune in on Tuesday night after Real Talk Tuesday. We do have a live upstream, live upstream? Upstream? <laughs> a live stream coming up on Tuesday night. If you're not a peep yet, check it out up here and join us. All right, thanks guys. As always, we appreciate you. Hit the like button, that always helps. And we'll see you out, out there. there.